up, gang? Welcome back. We are back at 613 Lyft here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. I'm Tim Walsh at Vanilla Gorilla. I'm going to take you through a back routine that'll be basically entirely unlike the first one that we did last week. Um, I never do the same back routine uh, two times in a row. I like to hit the back from a lot of different angles. The one thing that stays very similar is the principles that I follow. So if, you, if you've seen the first back video, you'll remember that the pump or, or activation exercise I used was the seated unilateral uh, cable row that they've got here where you can come slightly across the body. That's a great one for getting lots of blood in the lats and lots of activation. Another one that I'm a huge fan of is this machine pullover. If your gym doesn't have, if you're not blessed to have one of these plate loaded machine pullovers, uh, you could easily swap it out for the banded variation that I showed you in the last back workout of the dumbbell pullover, or you could use a high uh, cable and do uh, either a straight bar or maybe a rope or strap variation of a um, cable pullover for lat activation. Any one of those three. There's a couple of different principles that people will use, and even I will switch this one out. I don't always start a back workout with this exercise. Um, if I'm going to leave it till the third or maybe fourth exercise, I'll go pretty heavy and I'll usually throw in something to boost the intensity like a drop set. This time around, I'm going to do a straight three by 10, nice big full range of motion and a really good squeeze because I'm using it exclusively for pre-pump and activation. I wouldn't go so far as to say I don't care about growth uh, using this exercise, but today it's not my number one priority. Activation is, we'll get the lats full of blood and ready for what's coming up next. So, important to note here, these pads are here for a reason. If you wanna get great lat activation, I find, some people will reach back and they'll actually grab the handle and they'll pull like this. If that works for you, that's fantastic. It doesn't for me. I need to be pressing through my elbow into this pad to get great lat activation. So if you watch me here on the first few reps, this is my fully contracted position. I'm gonna roll back into a nice big deep stretch and then squeeze and roll right back into that big stretch again. So very much like a wave rolling in and off the shore. Out to sea, tide comes in, rolls right back out for that big stretch and squeeze. And I'm just gonna keep this rhythm for a straight set of 10. All right, now, In the effort of time conservation and really just showing you the exciting stuff, uh, there won't be a drop set or, or any crazy intensifier, but we're gonna skip ahead. I'll just show you the heaviest set that I did. So just, there was another two or three sets leading up to what you're about to see. We'll show you the top set here and then we'll move on to the next one. I know my diet's working well when I have to put the seatbelt on. Otherwise, I will fly away. do next after I arm myself with my awesome vanilla gorilla grip lifting straps that you could have if you go to www.vanillagorillacrew.ca. So 
What we're gonna do now is a standing dumbbell row. We're gonna do a variation called a dead stop. So as the name implies, it means every repetition is gonna begin from a dead stop on the floor. The difference in real time, a traditional standing dumbbell row would look something like this, big stretch, big squeeze. There is a little bit of a advantage that you develop with the sort of elastic effect of the lat. When it rolls into the full stretch, there's an immediate um, uh, reflex response, very much like with an elastic band. So what we want to do is eliminate that advantage, put the bell right on the floor, every rep has to start from a dead stop, so you're having to break inertia on every single rep. So if you're doing 10 reps, with a standing dumbbell row, you don't have to break inertia once. With a dumbbell variation um, where we do the dead stop, you have to break inertia 10 times. So you're taking away that elastic advantage and you're making the lat have to work a little bit harder at the very beginning of every rep to break inertia. So what, what I'll be shooting for here is every rep will start from a dead stop in the bottom, but I'll still be maintaining good scapular position and I'm actually going to, if you pay close attention, you'll see that when I put the bell on the ground, if I have to make a slight adjustment so that I'm starting from a full stretch, I'll do that, but hopefully I'll just kind of put it in the right spot at the right time. I'll break inertia, drive the elbow back to the hip. I'll try and hold that contraction for a microsecond and then control the bell back down, let it come to a dead stop and then go again. So every repetition is a separate event from the one that preceded it. And then again, I'm not gonna show you every set here. I'll show you the first few reps of the first uh, feeder set. And then I'll show you every rep of, every, uh, of both sides of the, of the top set, however heavy I end up going. But there will be no drop set, no giants, nothing crazy. It's gonna work up to the heaviest 10 that I can do with quality form and then move on to the next exercise. Okay, so we had to come over to the big kid dumbbell rack uh, because the bells over there only go up to 100. Ooh, baby, okay, let's do this. Okay, so what's coming up next, the two hand pull down. I'm not using this as a, as a real power or strength exercise at all. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm still gonna be using what I would consider to be a relatively heavy load because I want a load that's heavy enough that nine to 10 perfect reps is a real challenge. But I'm not in the mindset where, okay, I'm, I'm going for 10 
And if the ninth one is murderous, I'm not gonna try and cheat the tenth one. I just want as many quality reps with a big, big stretch and then a really good contraction. I'm gonna completely relax my scapula to go up into the stretch and then fully contract it and drive the elbow back like I was trying to put it in my back pocket to get really good activation for lats. They'll get, I'll get some rear delt in here, some rhomboid, some uh, middle trap, even some lower trapezius. So I'm not using this as a monster power exercise, but I am using it as a good um, way to get maximum muscle fiber recruitment and good overall upper back development. I'm gonna leave a little bit of gas in the tank because the next exercise is where I'm gonna get really, really aggressive. So this needs to be perfect more than it needs to be powerful. If you happen to be training at home, if you have a, a home gym, like a pulley uh, setup, or they don't have a dual pulley variation like this at your gym, variety is the spice of life. As long as there's one or two overhead pull down variations somewhere in your back programming, that's fine. And you wanna just vary the grips as much as you can. So it's not the end of the world. If, if you're not in a situation where you'll get an opportunity to do a dual cable pull down, a close grip variation, medium grip, um, reverse grip on a straight bar, wide grip overhand pull down, all of those can be done off a single pulley and they're all great. There isn't one that really stands out above the rest of them. So if you can't do this one specifically, but you've got a, some single option, close grip, medium grip, wide grip, overhand, reverse grip, switch them all up. There's, there's, there's nothing better than variety. Your back is a very big complex group of muscles. You wanna hit it from as many different angles as possible. So don't worry if you don't have this one. Hey guys, it's Chelsea. So Tim's mic accidentally disconnected for his explanation of this set, so you're kind of stuck with me. He defined this set as the first, uh, or this exercise as the first time he was gonna get a little bit crazy during this workout. Um, seated cable row, he did one to two feeder sets. You're seeing the first feeder set here of only five to six reps. He wanted to spend as little energy as possible figuring out the load that he wanted for the big drop set. Um, when he goes into the drop set, which is just about now, you'll see he'll do as many reps as he can. Clayton will drop the weight two plates. He'll do as many reps as he can again, take a five to seven second break, and then Clayton will drop another two plates and then he'll go right to failure. Enjoy. <laughs>
Okay, so exercise number four is going to be sort of a replacement or an alternative to the chest supported medium grip row that we finished off the last back routine with. The purpose of that one was specific areas of the upper third of the back and the purpose here is gonna be very much the same. I'm gonna, you'll see I'm gonna grab right from the top here. If I wanted to hit the lower outer portion of the lat, I would grab in here somewhere. If I wanted to do uh, maybe rear delt, rhomboid, uh, middle, middle trapezius, I would grip out here. What I'm gonna be after, I'm gonna take this grip. So what I'm looking for, uh, I'll still get some rear delt, some rhomboid, I'm gonna get some middle and the upper part of the lower trapezius. I'm gonna do these fairly heavy. I'm only gonna do two sets and I'm doing both of them to complete failure. So uh, again, staying in with, wh with where my training is at right now and even Paul's even though he's not here, moderate to lowish volume but high intensity. So there's only gonna be two sets of these but they're both gonna be extremely high intensity because I'm going to complete failure on both of them. As soon as I have to cheat a rep, I might do a couple of controlled partials, but then that's it. I completely just lied to you. Um, the first set was awesome, it felt really good, but I didn't get, I was really hoping to fail around 15 to 17 reps, and I got like 11. So I would like to get a little bit more volume in this last set. So I'm gonna go to failure with three plates aside, and then just rest long enough to peel the outside plates off, then get right back at it and go to failure again. So disregard what I said 45 seconds ago, what you're about to see is the truth. Okay, so last second before I take off here, also worth noting, pay attention to my scapula, and especially for everybody watching this at home or if you happen to be watching at the gym right now, there's a nasty tendency with a lot of rowing movements, when people get tuckered out, the trapezius will start to creep up and they'll end up doing a lot of this. That's why most people have great big thick traps and they're super tight and people get random headaches and their posture sucks. Their traps are overdeveloped because they're not being aware of scapular retraction and depression. So in this movement, if you need to check your posture on the fly, it's pull your shoulders up, push them back, push them down. That should be the position that you're staying in while you're doing this movement. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that's a wrap on another back workout. Try that one out. Um, drop me some comments in the, uh, in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you thought of the workout, if you've got any special requests. Carpet bomb us in the comment section. What kind of content you want to see, we'll be releasing. The video that we just released was one of Chelsea's kitchen hacks. We were going to do that from time to time anyway, but if you want to see more of that, um, or you'd like to see less of that, or you'd like to see more training or less training, or anything specific, uh, please don't make CrossFit or yoga requests. Um, keep it bodybuilding. <laughs> um, but yeah, this today was an absolute blast. Um, moderate volume, super high intensity. Thanks for joining us. And please, 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 I'm going to try to keep reminding myself to remind you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And actually, if you didn't enjoy the video, feel free to give it a dislike. But if you're going to do that, give me a comment. Tell me what was missing because we want to be better and better for you every time. Yeah, so it's like, share, subscribe, click the bell, and check us out at www.vanillagorillacrew.ca uh, and grab some of the sweet merch like those straps and a bunch of the other crap I can't show you because I'm not wearing any of it right now. Thanks so much. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it's Chelsea. Just a massive shout out to 613 Lift for hosting again today. We always have such a blast when we train there and it's super good to see everybody. Special shout out to Clayton for helping with the drop set. Thanks so much for that. If you haven't checked us out yet, you can find us at www.vanillagorillacrew.ca. Our website just launched and we have a sweet, sweet merch line that we would love to see people wearing in the gyms. You can also find us on Instagram at, at @vanillagorillacrew. Alright guys, until next time, see you on the flip.